we are back, and we've saved the best for last. We've got Kevin Gould from Bendix King. I've known Kevin through a number of iterations, uh, both from his tenure running uh, Piper Aircraft and, of course, now in uh, taking the, the hot seat, if you will, at Bendix King, trying to reinvent lightning, if you will, and doing a heck of a job in the process, and more important, looking in all the right directions. Kevin, before we get into the specifics of where you're at, I'd like to get uh, just a couple of comments about where you see the avionics industry right now. You've been both an avionics buyer as an OEM, right. but now you're looking at this industry from inside. How do, you, how do you look at its health? Give it a report card if you can. Yeah, you know, it's great. Um, avionics is probably the one aspect of general aviation where there's really some movement, and, and it's exciting. It's a, it's a great time to be in this segment of the industry. You know, I, I take a look at the, the way GA pilots fly, and I ask myself, you know, what is it that they really need? What, what, what me needs are not being met? And so we're really focusing on two things, and one of them is to make avionics systems that are just incredibly easy to use, and the other aspect is to try to make avionic systems an offer them to the public that are affordable. And those are the two things that we hear over and over again that they really want to see. So as far as health, I think the avionics industry is on a nice track. There's some great new technology coming out, but we've really got to address those two core issues. If I can segue for just a second, I've had this conversation a little bit during the intro with Tom Patton, my second in command, and then with Paula Dirks and basically posited this. Can you imagine what kind of shape general aviation would be in if the avionics industry hadn't innovated and brought the capabilities to bear over the last uh, decade, decade and a half as it has? Can you imagine GA without the glass panels, without, the, without WASP, without all these things that we've done in the last decade plus? Yeah, you know, it's, it's um, one of the great perspectives that fellows like you and I have is that we learned on uh, steam gauges. And so we didn't have any of that. I remember the first time I flew with the DME aircraft, I could actually know how far away oh, I was cool? from something. Oh, I, I was in heaven. And then you transition over to GPS, then you've got moving maps. It just totally changes the character of flying. And I think it makes people much, much safer pilots. They spend more time paying attention to safety factors than just trying to basically figure out where they are and where they're going. So, um, you know, I, I do have a hard time imagining what it would be like if all we had were still steam gauges. The advent of GPS was an incredible step forward. And honestly, I think we're on the verge of another step forward too. And that is the ability to have very, very affordable systems like um, my wingman that runs on the iPad it, and have that available. It's, it's accessible to so many people and it's just tremendously powerful. I know I, when I fly now, I fly with a nice glass system and I've got it all programmed to fly where I want to go, put in the flight plan, hit the autopilot and away I go. But I'm always running the iPad in the background with my wingman and watching and, and cross-checking because it's showing virtually the same information. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't use it for primary purposes, but if the worst ever happened and we had screens go blank and, and you didn't have the information you needed and you're in a you're situation... You're in a where, heck of a lot better situation you, than you would have been otherwise. You are. Yeah. So for a lot of reasons, it's very, very good. It's pretty amazing stuff. Yep. Okay. What's the latest at Bendix King? Well, as you know, and, and you and I have talked in the past, we're in a rebuilding mode, and that's coming along very well. We've hired a VP of engineering, a fellow named Nick Bogner, uh, came to us from Dynon Avionics. Um, Nick knows the industry, a uh, real good mind, good leader, and so he's building out our engineering team. And as he does that, that then expands our capability to bring new products to market more quickly. And that's the name of the game for us. We've got a great product roadmap and, and a great look forward, and now we're in the execution phase. So we feel very comfortable about where we are. We're always pushing, and I think that um, uh, we didn't make product announcements at this show, but I think that uh, later this year in the summer particularly, you're going to see some very exciting announcements from us. Party time at Oshkosh? <laughs> yeah, yeah I'd, uh, I'd have to say that's true. Oh, uh, I look forward to it in no <laughs> uncertain terms. Well, you've already introduced the audio panel. Mm -hmm. You've made an incredible commitment to the iPad architecture. Okay. Obviously, some interesting thinking is going on here. And I realize that you can't tell me a whole heck of a lot of what you're doing because, well, that would just spoil everything. Mm -hmm. But can you give me an idea of what Bendix King 2015 or, or 2020 is going to look like? Yeah. 
I, I, I try to uh, look at it um, akin to what went on in the home computer industry where you know we had the early machines and they were DOS based and there were a lot of commands you had to understand and if you didn't really understand the commands you couldn't make it do well and there were some guys that knew all the commands and they were really good at it. And then all of a sudden things came out like Windows and then um, the Apple systems came out and now the iPad and they're so bloody intuitive that you pick up one of those devices now and you don't need an owner's manual, you don't need a tutorial, you can just kind of turn it on and oh I see how it works. We want to see that level of ease of use, of intuitiveness, come into avionic systems. And that's going to be one of our founding principles as we move forward. And so I think when you look ahead uh, two years, uh, seven years, and you start to think, how could these things be easier to use? Because you know, I talk to experienced pilots, guys that fly a lot and, um, and have very nice equipment, but they'll tell me, they'll say, you know, the only thing is if I don't fly for a month, I forget how to make this thing do what I wanted it to do. It shouldn't be so difficult. You lose the sharpness, no question about yeah. it. So those are the kind of principles that we're going to follow. And in the process, we're going to try to make the, the products affordable enough so that folks, if they don't have um, a lot of resources to put into avionics or they don't have a very expensive airplane, they can still afford to bring this great new, easy to use technology into their aircraft in the way of certified avionics. Have you watched what's been happening to avionics and the light sport community, where they are bereft of the regulatory oversight outside of ASTM, which of course is a voluntary community standard, and the amount of extraordinary, t well, obviously you know something about it with having uh, a fellow who's uh, spent some time yeah. at Dynon, who of course has been particularly uh, gifted in that arena, but you, you can't not look at that and just feel incredibly jealous at the freedom that's there and the amount of progress that's been made in such a short period of time. Yeah, yeah, very true, and you're right. Nick came from that world, and so he understands it very well, and, and that's kind of the time frame he works in, very fast uh, pace that he moves at. Um, we do find a lot of support from the regulatory community now, and I think that they understand that we're trying to help pilots and, and fly uh, with more safety and more situational awareness, and so we're feeling a lot of support there, and so we think that we're going to be able to move fairly rapidly with a lot of these great ideas that we have. One of the things that we're hearing quite a bit and concerns us a great deal, there's a number of major manufacturers here with products in the pipeline that at this point can't get the FAA to even return a call. And we know what the reason is there. They're, they're very tight on funding. Uh, everything has to be justified, 10 decimal places, so forth and so on. Uh, do you see Bendix King's initiative being impacted by what's happening in Washington? And how do you get past that if you do? Yeah, you know, it's uh, the, the folks um, and the regulatory authorities uh, do the best that they can with the constraints that they have, and, and we try to support them and help them as much as we can. And frankly, manufacturers and, uh, and uh, firms that design avionics and certify avionics, they can help themselves and they can help the regulators, and that's what we encourage them to do. And, and that's kind of the tack that we're taking. The community out here, despite the economy, despite the regulatory environment, despite, 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 still has this sense of we will survive, we will mm -hmm. get past this, uh, you, you go from booth to booth to booth, well, we're going to be okay because, we're going to be okay because, everybody has their because, and um, they're not, some of them are not so different. So Bendix King is going to be okay because because we believe in the GA industry. We think that it's a great industry to be in. It's had its ups and downs, but flying is such an integral part of what we do, and we firmly believe in it. And I think that as we pursue the tack that I've outlined, the ease of use and the affordability, that that's going to make us uh, kind of st us stand apart from the competition. And we think that it really helps the customer base, because in the end, we all want our industry to succeed. And if we can help the pilots be safer, better pilots, we think that that's a good thing. We think that's going to carry us through. You got some tongues wagging when you did a presentation at the Redbird uh, Symposium yeah. last fall. This is, of course, Redbird Flight Simulation. Yeah. They did a interesting flight training symposium. A lot of people got up and talked about things that were a little bit off the beaten track. Yeah. Folks that were being innovative and being creative and at times just being radical. And you didn't come there to sell avionics. You came there to talk about how we'll save, sell avionics, but more important, how those avionics will be utilized to rebuild the industry. 
Can we revisit a little bit of that? Yeah, yeah, that was a great opportunity for us. And, and I re have a, just the utmost respect for Jerry Gregoire putting that together. And, and I think that our industry can really benefit from spending some time listening to, to his thoughts about it. Um, you know, the, one of the things that we talked about in that and that, uh, that I spoke about and showed some data on was the frequency of the accident rate, the safety rate in GA and correlations between phases of flight. And basically when the pilot workload gets high and it's at a time when you're in the airport environment, that is when um, bad things can happen. And so we want to provide enough information to pilots to help them when they're in those difficult times. And so we're going to focus products on that. And, and in fact, you'll see some of that this summer uh, when we uh, make some announcements. Do you think that's an isolated attitude right now? Or are you beginning to see that become more pervasive, in, at least in the avionics segment? You know, I, I'm hopeful that, that more and more people are realizing that there's some real opportunities uh, in GA when it comes to our safety record and, and things that we can do uh, to improve it. And is if we can help pilots understand what's going on in their airplane and what's about to take place, then I think that we can, we can help ourselves. And, so, and you know, the avionics systems, they know an awful lot about what's going on in that airplane. We need to mine that data and make it, put it in front of the pilot, make it available to the pilot in a way that, that he or she can respond prior to it becoming a critical point. Interesting stuff. Let me do something totally unfair to you here. <laughs> okay. We have been celebrating and frankly applauding, lauding, whatever you want to call it, the innovative attitude on the part of the avionics community. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we've been postulating about what the, a different industry this would be if the power plant manufacturers and the airframe manufacturers could achieve the same type of paradigm. Is that possible or is avionics unique from the standpoint of its ability to quote unquote think fast on its feet and achieve great things in, in short order? Well, I, I think one of the things that avionics uh, benefits from is its association with consumer electronics. That there's so True. many so many advances, technical advances that take place that we can mine easily and the cost structures are fairly low. Mm -hmm. the, the, the power plant guys, you know, bless their hearts, they, they're up against kind of basically low volume production, so that makes anything that they do really expensive. And it's hard for them to go over to an associated industry like automobiles and grab the technology and bring it across because there's, there's some fits that just yeah. don't, and a lot of people have tried it and it just, it doesn't Never quite worked. work. So, um, so they've got that hurdle to deal with. And you know, airframes are airframes and the laws of uh, aerodynamics haven't changed over the last 100 years, last time I checked. And so, you know, those things are kind of, uh, they've got bigger hurdles than we do. We, we are in a unique position to take advantage of some of the things that happen around us and bring them into our industry. You have had the, some unique perspectives in previous employment. Mm -hmm. um, you've done, some really extraordinary things in those in those realms. With that experience, looking out at this floor with all the things that are going on here, fair amount of excitement despite the conditions around us, what advice do you give to the avionics community and how to survive? You know, I, I would, um, here's, here's what I, th uh, I think about most. The pilot population is declining. And quite honestly, there have been a lot of theories why, oh, it's too expensive, and avgas is expensive, and, and aircraft, or the insurance rates are high, and there's a whole bunch of reasons. But, but quite honestly, we haven't answered that question, as we as an industry have not developed, I don't believe, a sufficient answer to that question. No. Once we understand that, we're going to help ourselves out and help our industry out. So my advice to everybody in the avionics community is, don't stop asking yourself the question, keep probing and help us all to understand what is it about the pilot, about flying right now, that's causing the pilot population to decline. Because you think back in the 50s and 60s and 70s, I mean it was growing tremendously. And now it's, it's, it's moderated and now it's on a downswing. Why is that? Why, what is causing that? When we can answer that question, I think it's going to open our eyes to a lot of things about flying that'll help us in general. You think we can really answer it though? There's so many people have tried. I know, I know, but the point is never stop asking. Never, ever, ever stop asking. Yeah. Well, whatever you learn is certainly better than what you, what you don't know, so. That's right. Indeed. Kevin, as always, fun. I, 
the verbal jousting is always such good times, and yep. you've got such a great background to work against and everything else, and I sure appreciate good. your time. Jim, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Arrow TV's live coverage of the 56th Annual AEA International Convention and Trade Show is brought to you in part by the following sponsors. 